Welcome to another edition of MCAT Strategy. Today we will be doing a biological sciences lecture on ions and the resting membrane potential. This lecture serves to lay the groundwork in order for you to understand action potentials in a future lecture. All cells in the body are bathed in extracellular fluid and the concentration of various ions differs between the intracellular and the extracellular fluid. Today we will be concentrating on sodium and potassium because those are the major ions involved in a typical action potential. So it is critical for you to remember that the concentration of sodium ions is higher outside of the cell than inside of the cell. And the concentration of potassium is higher inside of the cell than outside of the cell. So as I said before, in a typical neuron action potential, sodium and potassium are the major ions that are involved. Sodium is higher outside of the cell and potassium is higher inside of the cell. So next we will talk about how these ion concentrations are maintained. Cell membranes are selectively permeable, meaning that some molecules can move freely across while others cannot. Cell membranes restrict the free movement of ions, so they resist the movement of ions down their concentration gradient. This is important because if the cell membrane was freely permeable to ions, then the ions would just rush down their concentration gradients and you would have no ionic gradients. So the cell membrane is relatively impermeable to sodium ions. There is, however, some passive leak of potassium ions to the potassium leak channels that are embedded in the cell membrane. So because potassium passively leaks out of the cell, there needs to be a mechanism in order to maintain the ionic concentration. These pumps use ATP to pump sodium out of the cell and potassium into the cell against their concentration gradients. For each ATP that is hydrolyzed, three sodium ions are pumped out and two potassium ions are pumped in. So with the passive leak of positively charged potassium ions out of the cell, and because the sodium potassium ATPase pump pumps more positive ions out of the cell than into the cell, this leads to an imbalance in the distribution of positive charges. All cells of the body have a potential difference across their cell membrane because of this uneven distribution of charges. And as you can guess, the inside of the cell is negative with respect to the outside, and the outside of the cell is relatively positive compared to the inside. This potential difference that exists because of the unequal distribution of positive charges is called the resting membrane potential. The resting membrane potential is approximately negative 70 millivolts in most cells. The resting membrane potential and the ionic concentration gradients are critical in the generation and propagation of action potentials. The next topic we will be discussing is the electrochemical gradient that is set up by all of these processes. Notice that there are two types of gradients that are present, one electrical and one chemical. Recall from your science classes that in terms of electricity, opposite charges attract. Also recall that when molecules have a concentration gradient, molecules will move down their concentration gradient from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. Sodium ions are positively charged, so they are attracted to the relative negativity of the inside of the cell. In addition, the concentration of sodium ions is higher outside of the cell, so it wants to travel down its concentration gradient into the cell. Therefore, the electrical chemical gradient strongly favors the movement of sodium into the cell. And that is important to remember when we discuss action potentials in the next biological sciences lecture. So it's time to test your knowledge of this lecture. Which of the following is correct? Please select your answer by clicking on one of the boxes.